meteorologist Mark Molnar. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Northeastern. We're going to go over the tropical update. Uh, is the GFS up to its old tricks again? We will find out. Heartbreaking situation developing in Texas and Louisiana as a severe weather outbreak turns into a major flood event this week. This could be a serious situation developing. Not very good. And we take a look at record warmth in the east as high pressure spins off of Bermuda High and crests over ridge of the east coast, producing temperatures well into the 80s, some even 85 and approaching 90 degrees in many areas. I want to thank you for all my new subscribers that have come on board. We've had quite a significant number coming on board the last week or two. And also my existing subscribers, thank you for your continued support. If you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button and the bell button so you're alerted when I come out with one of these videos. Let's get right into it, shall we? Taking a look at the tropical update here. As we were discussing last week, uh, GFS had quite a bit of activity in the Gulf of Mexico. But as uh, you remember me saying... Uh, we have to see if any of the other models come into agreement. Well, that just never happened, and the GFS pretty much lost as soon as we came within the 144-hour envelope. Pretty much lost all the systems. It's just uh, the nature of the GFS, I guess. Uh, so we take it with a grain of salt. But take a look at all the Saharan dust out here in the Atlantic. It's going to pretty much squelch any tropical development that it tries to occur at least during the next four to five days. Uh, we'll have to continue to watch the Gulf because we'll have some thunderstorm complexes coming off the coast of Texas. And I'll show you um, in the next frame here a big thunderstorm complex that does roll off Texas with all the flooding that's going to be occurring. We have the big low pressure out uh, just northeast of Bermuda here with that big gale that's really blasting along here. But other than that, we got high pressures along the east coast really dominating that ridge of high pressure. So we really don't have much in the way to talk about. The only thing I'm going to talk about here is in the next frame. And here it is, thanks to Tropical Tidbits. Look at the off the Texas coast as that thunderstorm, big uh, flooding complex, moves off of the Texas coastline. It does move into the western Gulf of Mexico. It will continue southeast. And sometimes you do have to watch these sort of complexes to see if they take on any tropical characteristics. We will watch it here at Media Marks, a Hurricane Northeastern, but right now... It will be moving at a pretty good clip, so I think the chances of that happening are next to nil. And briefly showing you the satellite view, that high-resolution satellite here into there. It's uh, the eastern uh, part of the screen there. The right-hand side, you see Africa, and then you see the United States there. Up in the upper left-hand corner, you see all that dust, all that brownish dust across uh, the Atlantic here. That will continue to inhibit development a bit. Uh, of course, this time of year, we're not really interested in much development anyway, so this really isn't going to make that big of a difference. Now, if it does manage to get into the Gulf of Mexico and off the East Coast, that may have some impact, but right now, I don't think this is much to write home about. I wanted to briefly show you the high-resolution NAM here, thanks to Tropical Tidbits. Look at what's uh, putting into motion. You see, starting from, say, Tuesday, later Monday, Tuesday, into Wednesday, and even into Thursday here, you see you have those complexes of thunderstorms, those big lines of thunderstorms across East Texas and southwestern uh, Louisiana there. You almost see that, for the most part, they're forming in literally nearly stationary lines or lining up training over the same area. And that's the problem we're going to get into here. Uh, we have a lot of tropical moisture that's going to be feeding in from the southeast, feeding these thunderstorms. And they're going to stall and they're going to train over the same area because there's very little steering currents. And they can't pretty much head east because uh, there's an area of high pressure over the Carolinas. Let me show you what I mean on the GFS model here. Now, if you take a look at the GFS, see that high pressure system there over the Carolinas in eastern part of North America? You see around the outer periphery of it heading from Cuba up through the central and western Gulf of Mexico right into Texas. That is a stream of tropical moisture that's going to continue to stream into southeastern Texas and southwestern Louisiana. That's going to keep the heavy rain and thunderstorms uh, developing and training over the same area. So this system is not going anywhere anytime soon. There also will be some severe weather threats, albeit they'll be anywhere from slight to maybe enhanced at times. Uh, but the big deal is going to be the flooding across uh, Texas and Louisiana. So we're going to continue to watch for that here uh, as this pattern gets very stubborn with this high-pressure system to the east. I wanted to show you this uh, precipitation totals map. 
uh, look at this 120-hour uh, count, but a lot of this falls in the first three to four days here across Texas. Uh, these are staggering rainfall totals. As you can see, we're approaching 9, 10, 11, 12, maybe 13 inches in some of these areas. And you see that tropical moisture plume heading from basically Cuba all the way across the Gulf of Mexico into Texas as the feed there. So I just wanted to briefly show you this map because Texas and parts of Louisiana are going to be getting dumped on the next 48 to 72 hours. Taking a look at the temperature departure from average here across the eastern part of North America. That's with that associated area of high pressure. We'll see anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees above average, especially across the north and the east. The further north and east you go, uh, we'll have the greater risk of getting into those temperature anomalies much greater. Lots of sunshine, uh, not much precipitation to be had. Across the deep south, you'll be more closer to average. After this map, you have to watch Florida, especially late in the weekend, early next week. You could approach 95 to 100 degrees as a really big tropical pattern sets up here. Um, that'll get the water temperatures really boiling as well. But here across the northeast, we're looking summer-like. We're swinging from the cold to the warmth, and that's usually how things occur here in the northeast. So anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees above average, anywhere from the mid to upper 80s, some areas even approaching near 90 degrees. Taking a look at your severe weather outlook, this is Tuesday, May 18th. This is for much of eastern Texas, uh, parts of Louisiana and Arkansas. This is where we get into some slight to enhanced risk of severe weather. This is carrying over from the big severe weather outbreak in western Texas on Monday. Severe thunderstorms could produce damaging wind to large hail and some isolated tornadoes. The big deal, though, in this shading will be the flooding. This is where things really get cranking. We have lots and lots of flash flood warnings. Uh, flood warnings and flash flood watches and flood watches. So I'd heed those warnings and watches because we're going to continue to be stuck with this stubborn pattern at least for the next two, three, maybe four days here across eastern Texas and parts of western Louisiana. Let's take a look at Wednesday. And taking a look here severe on Wednesday, it kind of starts tapering down to a marginal risk across much of south central part of the United States. Uh, Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, up into Missouri. Uh, the main threat, as I said, is going to be the flooding rains, training heavy rainers that move over the same area over and over again. These thunderstorm complexes that come off the Gulf and get their Gulf moisture and continue to train across the area. All right, taking a look at the NEO index, uh, continuing to stay negative. Signs that may become a little bit more neutral here, uh, but uh, yeah, we've been pretty negative as of late. Going to continue to watch for that. Uh, Blocking pattern back east. What's new? Taking a look at the weather pattern, it's a very stubborn weather pattern. Very big ridge of high pressure developing across the eastern part of North America. You can see that pushes well above average temperatures across the east. We're dealing with flooding there in Texas, parts of Louisiana and northeastern Mexico. Uh, this ridge of high pressure keeps that tropical moisture funneling from Cuba. Um, the Caribbean into parts of western part of the Gulf of Mexico. Nothing in the way of tropical development, but we're going to continue to see this stubborn pattern continue with a lot of heat in the east. Before we head into my immediate forecast area, we're going to kick it off with John traveling through Owego, New York. I don't know how I missed these photos, but I dug them out of my inbox here. Oh, thank you for sending these in, John. This is from Owego, New York. This is back on April 20, Thursday, April 29th of 21 this year. And he was traveling through Owego, New York with some rainfall in the area. And that is pretty much dead center in the heart of my forecast area. So very nice captures there, John, from Owego, New York, traveling through. Tuesday across the Northeast. Look at that. Brilliant sunshine. It's a good day to call out sick from work, isn't it? Look at that. Sunny in 79 in Binghamton. 79 in Albany. 79 in New York. 79 in Boston. 79 in Erie. 83 in Harrisburg and 82 in Pittsburgh. Look at that. Very beautiful time of year uh, to visit just about any part of the Northeast. Look at that. So if you want to get out there and enjoy it, get out there and enjoy the upper Susquehanna Valley, lower Susquehanna Valley, New York City. Look at this, really beautiful to get out there and enjoy across the Northeast. Uh, let's uh, take a look at your midpoint. Wednesday across the Northeast, look at that, another great day to call out a sick from work. Uh, don't tell your boss I said that or suggested that, but you know what? You're probably thinking it right now, right? Look at that, sunny from uh, pretty much uh, Harrisburg, sunny in 87. Look at that, 
Summertime weather, 86 in New York City, 86 in Scranton, 85 in Boston, 84 in Binghamton, 83 in State College, 82 in Buffalo, and 81 in Syracuse. Look at that. The coldest spot is Toronto, 79. You can't even call that cold. This is beautiful weather. Get out there and enjoy it. Taking a look at your Thursday, look at this. Yes, we do in the late afternoon hours have that chance of a shower or thunderstorm across upstate New York, extreme northwestern Pennsylvania, uh, towards the Allegheny uh, Mountains there, and then up towards Burlington and northern New England here in the Adirondacks. Uh, but this is mainly a 20 to 30 percent chance of an isolated shower or thunderstorm. None of these will be severe. We don't have enough dynamics to create any severe weather. Um, and we have that stalled out frontal boundary to the east there. We are getting a little cooler there as the uh, east wind kicks off there in Boston. So it'll hold temperatures down into the 70s. But look at that. Inland here, 89. We're almost heading towards 90 here in Harrisburg. 88 in New York City. 87 in Scranton. And 85 in Binghamton. We're getting as hot as a firecracker. Here it is Friday across the area. Look at that front coming in from the east. It's just barreling in. You got that... Uh, East wind kicking in, uh, keeping Boston and New York City kind of more in the marine layer into the upper 70s. Still very pleasant. So if you want to get out there in New York Central Park, get out there and enjoy it. Look at that inland, though. Look at that. We're almost approaching 90 again in Harrisburg, 84 in Binghamton, 86 in, in uh, State College, and 88 in Pittsburgh. So getting mighty toasty inland. You do have that chance of a shower, a thunderstorm, particularly between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. on Friday afternoon. But as you're getting out of work Friday afternoon, it's time to party, TGIF. Get out there and enjoy. Look at that. Take a look at an extended outlook from hometown viewers from Big North to Scranton's upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York into northeast Pennsylvania. Look at this. This is really nice. This is a big turnaround from the, the previous part of May and April that we had. Look at that beautiful sunshine Tuesday, Wednesday. Chance of an isolated shower, thunderstorm between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It's almost like a summer pattern, almost like a ring of fire pattern around that high pressure system that develops across the Carolinas and off the East Coast. Look at that. Heading up towards the 79 on Tuesday, but look at that. We head towards the mid-80s for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then we kind of taper it down a little bit to the lower 80s Saturday, but look at that. We're pretty much carrying that over into the weekend. This will not be an all-day rain event for the Thursday through Saturday, so don't worry. If you have outdoor plans, just get out there and enjoy it. You deserve it. After all the garbage weather that you had to deal with the last several weeks. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Northeastern. I want to thank all of you that have subscribed to me recently. There's been hundreds of you, hundreds of new people to the channel. Thank you for uh, subscribing. I won't let you down and provide you with many more years of experience, especially in hurricane coverage. Also, I want to make note, too, that uh, those of you that have supported me over the years, thank you for continuing to watch my videos and supporting me. And give my Facebook and Twitter pages some love and website as well. Facebook, Media Mark, Weather Northeastern, and also Hurricane Northeastern. Also, Twitter, WX Northeastern. I know the Twitter page has been really languishing lately. I know some of you don't like the platform, but just if you can get over that, please follow me on uh, Twitter as well. Facebook as well. We do some fun stuff as well, uh, especially when the weather gets really nice. You're going to want to see exactly what I do. So, yes, give my uh, social media pages some love. We do some fun stuff as well. So, there you have it. 